Chateau de Rosière are back as part of the dream team because Margot is back. And just as a very special treat for her, now she's back, we're going to start destroying the chateau. And it's quite funny because in French you say, um, when you're going to start a job, you say you're going to attack it much more than you do in English. And Clement picked up on this and he keeps telling people in English, we need to move into the coach house so we can attack the chateau. And um, so he keeps asking when we're going to attack it. And that's today, Clement. We're going to attack it today. We're going to mount our attack. I've been trying to do a 3D scan with my phone my iPhone so that we can see what it's like afterwards and we before and we can do a walkthrough but it's not working very well so we're just going to have to rely on Adonis's fabulous um, before <laughs> pictures so I think first we need to just move stuff out don't we first things first did I tell them what we're doing no I didn't I, did I don't I? think you did <laughs> we're attacking the chateau but what are we attacking <laughs> do you remember Oh, you started, did you? Oh, you Don't started start without already. us. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is 19th century corridor. It was redone in the 19th century, which is actually pretty modern in this, in this chateau. And it was made higher and more grand with beautiful woodwork. And then in the 1970s, they decided it wasn't quite dark enough. So they wanted to add horrendous Hessian wallpaper just awful. Sorry if you like it, but it really is awful. It makes it so dark and claustrophobic. And they also painted wood with brown. So you paint a wood to look like wood, which is totally incomprehensible. But they are the same people who painted stone the colour of stone downstairs. So maybe it doesn't surprise me totally. It um, made some sort of sense then. <laughs> <laughs> and this is this is the corridor we walk through the most. It's got the single bathroom for the chateau off one side and the main bedroom off the other and our bedroom off another side. So we walk through it every day and nearly every day I curse this wallpaper. And yeah. so it was the first thing I wanted to do. I mean, I started to tiny, peel some tiny bits back at Clement's managed to peel a little bit back. <laughs> what our dream would be is that we find something beautiful behind it. We're not too hopeful, but there might be paintings because there are some beautiful wall paintings elsewhere. Um, there could be old wallpaper. So we've got to go a bit carefully. We can't just run in like maniacs and start ripping. <laughs> like like angry, cats at the wall. <laughs> or angry, I was going to say angry squirrels. I don't know why. The <laughs> cats would uh... <laughs> Angry Clemens. Um, so we've got to be a bit careful, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. But first, I think we need to move a bit of the furniture out. I've also, you might be able to hear that I can't speak properly. I've got a cold. I don't feel bad. I just can't speak. A cold in June. Yeah. No, we're July now. July. A cold in July. Cold in July. <laughs> I mean, it is cold in July, but there we go. Right. You take it by yourself. Well done, darling. Put that out there, can you please, my lovey? Well, I'll just... Excellent. Rolling wars. <laughs> roll, roll, roll. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> Her mind. Um, we've got a new sport. She, of rug your rug rolling. was shorter. <laughs> she beat me at rug rolling. It's a new Olympic sport. <laughs> it's full of books. Oh! Watch your back. Yeah. Ah. I can't. Oh, oh, oh. Be careful. <laughs> you might slip, so just be careful. <laughs> spins? Right, this is serious stuff. <laughs> well, should we start this end then? Yeah, I would start with the back one. <laughs> <laughs> you can see here as I peel it off that the hessian is backed by paper um, and underneath it looks like 
it's, I don't know what that is, could just be a um, plastered wall. But we have to be, if we want to see if there's anything um, interesting behind, we can't just rip it off like we're joking about. We do need to steam it off so that we don't take off anything underneath the different layers. Um, so much as I'd love to just start peeling back, we need to take it a bit easy. Well, we can start like this, you see. Hey, I just told everybody we need to do it carefully. Ah, okay, let's do it carefully. That, like but this. I think if you take it so that it doesn't get the bottom layer off, then it might be okay. But, yeah, we might want the bottom layer off. That's just... Yeah, Maybe. no, but I yeah. mean, just rip it yeah, now. Maybe. We'll steam the yeah. part a bit off more yeah. delicately, maybe. Yeah. Paper under it. Careful, careful. Wow. Oh, what's that? What is that? It's plaster. Uh, yeah, that's what we've got to be careful not to take off before we've checked what's on it. We need to make sure we roll it carefully so in case we want to reuse it somewhere. <laughs> right. And also we need to keep a bit for the archives of the house. Yeah. circumstances I would be very much against ripping something out in a part of the house where we still intend to have guests in the coming year I mean not paying guests our friends but um, honestly nothing would be worse to me than this wallpaper so I'm not too worried even if it's a sort of exposed wall for a while no <laughs> yeah even like this it looks better <laughs> This is really exciting because it looks like the same wood as this.
reasons that we are doing things like this is to find out what's behind the modernizations that were done here. It's really difficult to make plans for the future until we know what it looked like in the past. Um, and it's also really difficult to make decisions on which stage we pull back to. We've talked about this a lot before um, because there were huge modifications done in all of the centuries since the Middle Ages. Um, but for sure, we want to roll back what happened in the second half of the 20th century. So we're taking it quite easy, taking it back layer by layer. Um, and we'll only be able to make our plans for the future, literally the architect's plans, once we've seen what's behind this. Because our huge motivation in living in a historic building is the history. And we don't want to just smash on through it like previous generations have done. Uh, we want to work out what we want to preserve, what we want to showcase, and how we want to move forward with it in a historically sensitive way. It's the end of the school term, so we've been doing lots of activities with the kids at school, uh, well, with Clement, and uh, tonight is a very special night where all the kids are going back to school in the evening uh, to have a cinema night and a dinner there. So I have to stop now, and me and Clement are going to head off back to his school, but I'll meet you back here tomorrow. Welcome back to another day of ripping apart the chateau. And I think you can probably see pretty well why we wanted to move out before we got on with something like this, because based on the speed we're working, I reckon it will take 30 hours of work in total to strip these walls. Um, and obviously you can't do all that in one go. So you'd be walking in amongst all of this with little kids for a long time. Now, uh, Mark and I are having a bit of a debate. He keeps telling me, oh, he'll, um, we should just leave it as, almost as it is so if we're going to cover it again so that we don't damage the plaster because if we damage the plaster, we have to fill in all the holes to then cover it again. But I'm still really keen to see what's behind. And one of the reasons is we found writing. We found writing and drawing. Now... This is probably from the 1970s, maybe 80s. Um, but it's that one's someone's name. Over here, we've got here we've got drawings, plans for who knows what. That that looks like the panelling, but this doesn't look like anything that I've seen anywhere in the chateau. There are numbers, and this is all part of the history. I know it's only 50 years old, but this is all part of the history of the building, and I'm really keen to uncover it more. There was this amazing story of a chateau. I will link to the story in the description, and if I forget, as I normally do, then remind me. Um, when they had to redo a floor in a chateau in the Alps, they pulled up the existing flooring very carefully so they could relay it. And they found um, writing underneath the floorboards in pencil. And the carpenter, I think this was about 300 years ago, so it was very old, had written basically a diary underneath the floorboards. And it was gossiping about all the people in the village and saying rude things about the priest and who was having an affair with whom. And it was so interesting because it was a time period where most written documentation was done by educated people in formal ways and this was just like hearing the voice of an ordinary villager and although I don't think we'll find anything like that here it's still really interesting to see the processes that go in and the to touch the places that builders worked in before and just it's just a chance the only chance we're going to get to go back to the origins now, in order to be able to show this to you um, in a video, I'm not going to be able to finish the entire corridor, uh, but hopefully we'll get another section done before the end of today and you'll be able to see a bit more what we're talking about. I'd get rid of some of the bigger um, rolls of wallpaper 
the quickest way possible by getting them to the car to go to the tip by throwing them out the window, but apparently the chickens aren't very happy and I promise I didn't hit any of them. Mark has a real downer on this wood. He thinks it's really kind of modern, not old at all. Uh, and it's not very pretty, but I've got a feeling it might be, and I'm determined to highlight it it's in its best light. Show it in its best light. So I'm gonna try and clean it properly. This is a really simple steamer. It's just like a kettle with an oxygen mask on the end of it. Um, so this is only wallpaper paste, uh, which releases really easily. And so I just put it on, it traps it, steams it, and then I scrape it off. It's very simple, very effective. And it's not like, I mean, we had our kids around yesterday, which is something we would not have done if we were paint stripping because of the chemicals involved. But this is, uh, doesn't let off anything harmful whatsoever. I did the whole of that door pretty much now and as you can see I found an archway. Yeah that's really interesting. And it yeah. looks to me like it might have at some point had a bigger door over it or I'm not sure I'm not sure um, but I do think it's interesting. What's really interesting is that we're uh, at the first floor mm. and it looks like either it was a big, well, it might have been an outside door, an outside wall at some point mm. and there might have been either a window or a, or a door or, or something, a door or something or, that was yeah. And this one also looks like there was something. And so I think when I get into peeling off all of the wall, we might get to see a little bit mm. more. Um, and it might even be worth t chipping back some of the plaster there to see what's behind it as well, because this is obviously quite recent skim on the top. Yeah. Not everywhere, but um, in areas that we're interested in pot mm. potentially. The mean. other idea I had um, is if we can secure um, some dendrochronology dating for the wood, because mm. although it doesn't date it exactly, um, it can tell you how recent it is. So, if, you know, if with dendrochronology, you take a core of wood and you compare it against a massive database of tree ring data um, for huge parts of the world, and you can tell when the tree that um, has been used in this was alive and where, roughly, um, which is hugely useful because obviously if you have one that's dated to the 1950s or 60s, you know it's not older than that. Mm. But if you have one that's sort of three or 400 years old, then you're faced with either this being an older feature or it being reused wood. Mm. Um, I don't know how, whether we can ply our connections to get that done or not. Yeah, we can. Uh, try with the university in Lyon. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. So, yeah, we've got a lot further to go with this, but it's been a really interesting start, mm. hasn't it? And it looks a lot better. Than it's so much better, even with a sort of ripped yeah. up wall, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> That's great. Well done.
Thank you, and thank you very much for watching. Remember, well done for watching. yeah, well done for watching. Um, remember, we're only doing a video every other week on this channel at the moment, but next week you'll be able to watch a video on our Lost Gardens of Chateau de Rosière channel. So please don't hesitate to go over there, subscribe, and turn on your notifications yeah, so you don't, don't miss them. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>